everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Karen, as you can see, I am flying solo again today. Lauren and I are doing some videos and just trying to keep our social distancing, but since today would have normally been one of my weekly vlogs, uh, my sister thought it would be such a cool idea to do like a question and answer type video because you guys, you know, I am putting out my Vlog of Hope videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, so we thought we'll change it up a little bit and give you guys like a Q&A today. So I hope you guys enjoy these questions that you guys asked. My sister picked uh, a couple of them out of all the questions and uh, she typed them out and she says, I'm just going to... I'm gonna ask you them, and you good with that? I'm like, sounds good to me. So I hope you guys enjoy these uh, Q&A, this Q&A video, and uh, a little opportunity to get to know a little bit more about me and Lauren. So thanks so much for watching, enjoy. All right guys, are you guys ready for question number one? And thanks for this great idea. So number one, Karen, are you ready? I am ready, so make sure you talk a little bit louder so they can all hear you. Sounds good. Okay, the first question is from one Queen ruler and she asks what motivates you every day to keep up with all you're doing during the quarantine at home and what gets you pumped up for each day all right so I'm gonna go ahead and answer this first question uh, basically you guys I've been treating this entire um, pandemic that's you know happening right now in the world I'm trying to make each day at least here at home um, like any other normal day so I've been getting up I've been making my coffee, as you guys can see from my Vlog of Hope videos, and uh, getting a shower, putting on makeup, doing my hair, putting on my jewelry, just like it's any normal Monday prior to all this. And even though I'm not out running errands like I used to, I'm still acting as if that's part of my day. I'm trying to keep everything as simple as possible. I'm trying to keep on my same routine, like I said. Um, it sort of helps, I think, with everything going on right now. Uh, you need some sense of normalcy, so that's why, basically, I've been doing this. You guys have been seeing me every day with a full face of makeup, my hair done, even jewelry on. I'm just trying to keep it a little bit normal. Um, the next question is, what pumps me up? You know what? I just think about the days that were normal, or the days hopefully here soon enough that we will have normal back to semi kind of a normal life. I think about that day I'm gonna get in the car and I get to see my granddaughter and uh, our children and hug my mom for the first time. So those are the things that pump me up every day when I get up, just to continue on my normal routine. That's a great answer. I, I think that's real important about trying to keep normalcy. So I, I love that. That's what I've been trying to do also. So your second question is from Carol Timlin. And she wants to know, what advice or tips would you give young women today who are just ready to start their careers? My advice to give young women today who are just starting their, uh, out their careers is first of all, um, I want you to think about, well, what is it, what is it that, that makes you passionate? Like, what, what are you passionate about? Um, you know, I went to college, but I never finished because there was nothing really at the time that I was interested in. It really just, I didn't have any passion for it. Um, I ended up being lucky enough to get a job with the airline industry. It was a fun job, but was I passionate about it? No, I was not. Um, so basically, after 9-11, when I had the opportunity to uh, actually start my own business, to me, that was exciting to be my own boss, to do something I truly enjoyed. And basically back then what it was, it was home decor. And I loved to entertain, you know, I loved to decorate. So to me, that was so exciting. I was very passionate about it. So what I did though, is I did my homework. I went out there and I wanted to pick everyone's brain that was in that industry because I wanted to be the best that I could be. I wanted to get on trainings. I wanted to learn. I wanted to talk to people. And I think that's why today, uh, with us having the blog and our YouTube channel, it's given me the opportunity to share the things that I am that I love, that I'm passionate about. But at the same time, too, you guys, I do my homework, you know, um, to, to teach us how to do a blog and how to do a YouTube channel and about different beauty products. We do our homework. And I do that because I'm passionate about it and I love it. So basically, I say find someone that could be a mentor to you, uh, ask questions, but put yourself, imagine yourself yourself in that position maybe take a picture of someone that's doing what you want to do what you're passionate about follow that person look at that picture and have that be your daily motivator Karen, I love that answer and why I love it a lot because it resonates with me but I also wanted to add that 
John Maxwell, if some of you know about him, um, a great author. He's written over 100 books. He's known as the uh, leadership guru. He also says to this day, he also loves to meet people like that are above him and that he admires. And while he's asking them questions too, he also likes to ask them, hey, so who else do you think I need to know? Who would you recommend I would you know, I can speak with? Mm. And I just, that is so important. You know, he's looking after someone that's, uh, that he admires and he's asking them, thanks for your giving your input, but who else do I, who else can I meet? I just think that is so awesome. Love that, yes. One day you might want to talk about the other community you and I belong to, the Empowered Living Community, which has so many like-minded people in it that think this way. I just think that adds value to so many people. So anyway, maybe Karen can talk to you about that another day. Yes, I can't wait, I forgot about it. Yeah, so anyway, your next question is by uh, Judy Shepard, and it's similar to the ones above, but um, what advice would you give your younger self? Oh, that's a really good question, and let me back up a little bit um, as far as with that. I, you know, one of the things I did when I was in high school is my senior year, I wanted to make sure that I said hello and was friendly to every person I came across. I don't care if you were the most popular person. I don't care if you were the biggest nerd. I don't care who you were. I made sure every day that I was very kind and to hello to everyone. I just, that was my, my, my kind of, um, challenge that I gave myself my senior year at high school. So now, of course, I grew up in a little small town. And uh, when I first got my job at the airline industry, I was moving to a big city. And, you know, uh, I was intimidated. I was scared. But I don't know who taught me this or where I read this. But I remember the first day I went in for training, I said to myself, Karen, act like you own the room and fake it till you make it. And I did. And I was really, you know, I'm not, wasn't, I'm not a shy person, but I was intimidated. And what I learned throughout all of this, and one good lesson is, um, just be true to yourself, is the one thing I can tell you, is be true to yourself. And that's one thing I learned over time, that if I was just true to myself back then and felt confident like I do today, I wouldn't have had to repeatedly tell myself, you know, act like you own the room when you walk into it, or um, fake it till you make it kind of thing, because, I should have been confident enough in myself knowing that, you know, just being who I am was gonna be good enough to be able to make friends, to do a good job, to work hard. And that's how I always was when I had a job prior to the, the bigger job. So, I mean, advice I give to myself, just, just know who you are. Um, you know, know the things that you are good at, that you're passionate about. Be who you are. Don't be who someone else is because no one else is like you. So uh, you have so many gifts to give. So use that when you go out there in the world and realize you do have a gift. Figure out what, what that is, what you love, what you're passionate about, and then go out there and do it. Love that. And I'm telling you, you definitely practice what you preach because your young daughters they're young adults now, they are exactly like you, especially, well, both of them, Morgan and Caitlin. But every time they meet somebody, they are, they're, they are so nice. And I know that your daughters always got complimented on, and they were pretty popular when they were in um, high school and college, yet they had friends from all the different groups, which I just thought that is really good, especially in this day and age. So anyway, sure. I'm sorry, my computer just went out. Um, and oh, I, one story someone should look into is uh, if anybody's heard of Dana Perino, um, you know, she was the press secretary for President um, Bush, um, George what? W. Okay. And, yeah. And she said that when she was first given the role, she was assistant press secretary, but when she was given the, at the press secretary, she got advice from the guy that was stepping down and said the same thing about you, about owning the room and, um, you know, a lot of people, I, I, and what, one of the stories was, um, sometimes when people are in a group and you're I go, asked to go around the room, a lot of the men in the room would stand up and say their name and be proud and everything, and a lot of the women would from their seats just say, oh, my name is Beverly, you know, or something like that. Um, she said, you know, you, have, you do have to own the room. She goes, because the men do when they're in there, so if you can do the same thing, and it's really funny, you know, I retired from the Navy, and I noticed after I had read her book and saw her talking about her book, um, I saw, um, I was in a room, and there was probably, I don't know, I want to say like 30-some men, 
and there was only two of us women. And when, when they were going around the room, we had to introduce ourselves. Um, the, the first woman, she literally did the same thing. She sat from her seat and just said what her name was. And so when it was coming around to me, I thought, and all the men stood up and I said, you know what, when they come around to me, I'm definitely going to stand up and say, and be proud and be, um, you know, of who I am because, you know, we all have something to offer. I just thought that was a great story because I actually saw it in action. Yeah. Start standing up. And then I said, I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to own the room too. So that it makes great. you more confident too. Each yeah, time you do it. Yeah, that's a great tip. Okay, so here's another one. I like this one because I don't even really know. I'm guessing. Um, how did you and Lauren meet, and how long have you been friends? Okay. All righty. Well, Lauren and I met actually um, via our husbands. Um, I went to high school with Lauren's husband's brother. Didn't even know... Lauren's husband because he was much younger and you know Mark always talked about this guy and I'm like wait a minute I went to high school he was oh yeah yeah you know his older brother oh you would love his wife and so one day we all got together Lauren invited us all over her house and it's like everything Lauren had in the way she was with makeup and beauty and we had the same exact favorite wine down to the exact same brand and it was like the weirdest thing and everyone's like oh my gosh you two would love each other you guys really would and the more and more we got together our friends would say you two need to go into business together you guys need to do something you guys have so much in common it's crazy and then as time went on we became more friends and people kept mentioning it more and more um, finally one day is when I said, you know what, I really want to start a blog. Would you be interested? And Lauren's like, what's a blog? I'm like, oh my gosh, Lauren. So I explained to her what a blog was and I had an IT person who was a family member and I said, he's going to come over tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do this. You, are you in? Or are you out? And she goes, sure, I'm in, I'm game. And we had to come up with a name and we did. That's how we came up with the two orchids. And then about four months later, I said, you interested in doing a YouTube channel? And she's like, oh, are you kidding me? I'm like, no, come on, we can do it. Uh, so that's how it all started. And to be honest with you guys, know when you watch our videos or be or like our favorites videos or empties videos, uh, Lauren and I end up bringing the same stuff. We have no idea what each other is gonna bring every time we film, we have not a clue. And it just goes to show how much we have in common because we do so much the same. We even almost dress to compliment one another uh, when it's time to film. So yeah, that's our story. All right, what's next? Okay, the next one is, this is good. I think this might resonate with some folks out there. Um, did you raise your children in this house? And if so, any tips on transition into the empty nest? Okay. Uh, well, the first part of that um, question is the only child that finished high school in this house was Caitlin. Um, the other kids ha were, you know, off to or getting ready or going off to college. Um, so basically, it was just Kate here at the time and and Allie. Uh, as far as transitioning, I'm gonna be honest with you guys about this. If first of all, we we were taught, I guess. And my parent, our parents did the same thing that you want to raise your children to be independent. And, uh, that's what we did. And three out of the four kids went to school, went to college, away to college. I should say they all went to college, went away to college mm -hmm. and none of them came back. And was, was it sad as a parent? Of course you're sad. But at the same time too, it was so satisfying and gratifying to know that, Hey, listen, we've done our job. Our kids went off to college and they got great jobs. Two of them moved to Arizona. One of them moved to Michigan. Allie stayed local, but she was able to save money by staying with us and buy her own place. Uh, so we are so proud of our four kids because again, we did what we needed to do to make them independent. And now they're out all on their own. Two of them are married, one's engaged and uh we could not be prouder of our kids so basically i know as much as you want to hold on to your children and keep them underneath your roof you guys um our job is to do what we can do to raise our children to be independent because there's nothing more satisfying to see them in their own homes and their own careers and doing well and successful and i think as a parent you've got a lot to do and you should be grateful for that because that that all comes from you so 
Being empty nesters, uh, you know, you miss your kids, but at the same time too, we're so proud of them and they all love to come home to visit, which is a great thing. And when they spend the night under our roof, that's even more exciting and you appreciate it more than ever when you have those moments. Okay, next question. Okay, first of all, I wanna apologize because I forgot to tell you the two questions. Uh, the one about when you and Lauren met, that was from Cup of Coffee Baked. Okay. And, yeah, and then the last one um, about your uh, uh, empty nest was from Tina P. Perfect. So I wanted to give credit for those qu uh, questions. So the next question is from Vicki Howard, and she asks, please describe your favorite day post-COVID-19. No. Well, Vicki, that is a good question. I think we sort of talked about this a little bit on my vlog of Hope, what we were all going to do the day that, you know, we knew we had the all clear to go about a semi-normal life. Um, best day is going to be the day I get in that car and drive safely. <laughs> Uh, as fast as I can safely, no, but uh, actually to go see uh, my granddaughter, Giada. Uh, I haven't seen Morgan since either with her pregnancy and Tony. Uh, I have seen Kate and uh, we have seen Allie briefly, have not seen Zach and Lindsay. Um, but the perfect day is the day I can go to where my mom lives, give her the biggest hug, and then uh, go see Giada, Morgan, and all of our kids. That to me is going to be the perfect day when actually we can have all of them together again. Uh, and I can't wait that day can't come soon enough. Okay, the next questions from Denise Thronson. I apologize if I didn't pronounce your last name correctly. She wants to know, um, she said she would love to hear your days of working with um, the airlines and with the jobs you, you held. Um, and I also think, Karen, because I'm your sister, I know about a Mr. Rogers book that you did too about that. So why don't you tell us that? Okay, hopefully this is a better angle. You guys don't mind all my bread and all our stocked up food here in the background. Uh, okay, so as far as the airline industry, uh, I was not a flight attendant. Uh, what I was was called a customer service agent. Actually, I held quite a few positions with the airline industry. First of all, uh, the first position I got hired was a special assistant representative. We drove around those little carts that went beep, 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 and we drove around and uh, you know helped out the elderly people that needed uh, assistance that couldn't walk. Even uh, we had children that flew alone that we would take gate to gate on that little cart. So that was my first position. Uh, my second position was a customer service agent. So you know when you go to uh, to take a flight somewhere and um, you're in the boarding area and the person gets on the PA and says, you know, good morning, welcome to blah, 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 flight one, two, three, four to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That was me. I'm the one that made those boarding announcements. And also when the plane pulls up and leaves the jetway that you, that jet bridge that you walk on to the aircraft, that was my job to pull that jet bridge on and off the aircraft. I still have nightmares about that to this day, believe it or not, that, that, that the jet jetway didn't work and I was slamming the aircraft because that's the one thing you never wanted to do. You could have gotten so much trouble for it because you can just imagine the damage you could do. So uh, I did really enjoy that job, that position. Another position I had, I worked in the club for uh, the uh, club members, like the businessmen that did all the traveling. A lot of times us, uh, uh, stars like actors and actresses uh, also would come into the club. That's where I worked. Uh, I also worked in the control tower and we uh, did a con control as far as um, keeping track of our crew members and making sure they were all checked in for their flights and all that. Uh, that's what I did. And another job I worked was in our material services department where uh, I bought uh, aircraft parts. Um, I was in charge of hydraulics and pneumatics and all the placards that you see on the aircraft, making sure they were all ordered and the paint. And I tell you what, that was a very tough job. Um, I got placed into the job when my uh, tower job, they did away with the positions. And the people that had the job at Material Services had to have four year degrees, which I didn't have. Had to know every part of the aircraft, which I did not know. It was a very tough job. It was a very challenging job. That was one of those things, you fake it till you make it kind of a thing. And I ended up really enjoying the job, but I ended up wanting to go part time after having Morgan. And that's when I went back to customer service as a gate agent, where I then left the airline industry right after 9-11. Uh, Mr. Rogers, when I first got hired with U.S. Airways as that special assistant representative, uh, the customer service manager pulled me into the office and he had said, hey, you know what, Mr. Rogers wants to make a book called Your First Experience Flying. I would love you, for you to represent uh, our airline as one of the employees. And so I was really honored and I got to meet Mr. Rogers when I worked at the club. 
uh, at that time too, after the fact, and it was really exciting and a great experience. So uh, I'm sure I've, you probably have seen me share that book with you guys uh, every once in a while on some of my blogs. But yeah, that was the big highlight of my uh, airline experience. I didn't realize all the specific jobs that you had and the funny ones that I remember when you start out riding those carts because I know how you drive, so. I was embarrassed. <laughs> no, but I can only imagine how you, when you're driving and how fast you are, how you, I don't know how you avoided all those people. All those <laughs> it walking. was hard. <laughs> no one knew. I know. <laughs> so another question is, um, uh, this is from Paula K, and she wants to know how old is Archie, and does he run off the? Uh, is he run off if he's not leashed? <laughs> All right, Archie is six years old, and you better believe he runs off if he's not on the leash. The first thing he would do is dart to our next door neighbors, and he'll go right up to their back uh, screened-in door and try to sniff for little Cappy next door, big Cappy actually. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, we got to keep him on a leash all the time. That little one just wants to run and just visit all the neighbors and be at their front doors barking and you know sniffing so yeah we got to keep his leash on at all times the next question is from stephanie bausch b-o-u-s-h i'm sorry can't pronounce it um she wants to know how many sisters and brothers do you have all righty well my sister beverly who's asking the questions is three years older than me a lot of times when we were growing up, people always said, who's older? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> so anyway, she's three years older than me. I have two brothers, um, BJ, who is um, in the military. I'm not sure what rank he is. He's a colonel. Colonel, okay. And I think, oh my gosh, how old is BJ? I'm not sure. He's a few years, about five years younger than me. So, uh, and then I have a brother, Scott, who works for TaylorMade. He was a golf pro. And uh, he is 10 years younger than me. So, if I'm 55, he's 44. So, four of us. Okay. This question is from Barbara Falzone or Falzoni. And she wants to know, how was your very first date with Mark in high school? And where did you go? Barbara, hi. <laughs> um, our first date, let me turn this out. Our first date in high school is, I think, a typical first date, a dinner and a movie. Uh, the first thing, I, one thing I do remember is we went to this one store that was like a gift store, kind of candy store, and uh, Mark wanted to buy some freshened up gum. <laughs> I'll never forget that. That was his favorite gum back then. And I thought, mm, why is he buying that gum? <laughs> uh, so that's where we went for our first date. I was 15 years old. And uh, he was 16. This will be a combination question. I'm going to combine from Cynthia Caton and Dorothy McDonald, McDougal. Um, how many years have you and Mark been married? And how many children do you have? Um, and how many does Mark have? All righty. Uh, so we um, been married for nine years. We got married on 11, 11, 11. As you know, we sort of after... I graduated from high school. We went our own ways for 27 years. Uh, so we got married on 11, 11, 11. And um, between the four of us, four of us, <laughs> between the two of us, we have four children. Um, the oldest is my bonus child, Allie, who is 29. Um, and then Morgan is 28. And my bonus son is Zachary, who is 25, soon to be 26. And Caitlin is 25. So they're like bang, 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 which is great. There are four wonderful children and they love each other and we could not be more blessed. Okay. And this is the last question I have for you. It's from Antoinetta. Anyway, it is, what is, what was your wedding song? But I'm also going to ask, um, add what, uh, why did you pick it? Our wedding song was actually, uh, the piano version of the song, Marry Me. Uh, that song was very popular back then and I loved that song so much So I just wanted it to be the piano version of it and it was just perfect and I love that song You know, it's just I love every all the words behind it. I just love the meaning of it And uh, so that was our wedding song now as and as far as I'm gonna add this as an as a question and answer is uh, our the song that we danced to was Brandy Mark that is his absolute favorite song in the world is Brandy and not that he was a sailor <laughs> or anything like that, but he loved that song and that's what we danced to. <laughs> well, that's it for now. There was quite a few other questions, but I 
I think of your video would be going like days. So I just thought maybe we can do this at another time down the road. That'd be fun. Yep. And have Julie. That would be great. That would be so much fun. Um, but thank you so much, B, for asking the questions. This was a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, see ya. Love you. Love you. Bye. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the Q&A today. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much to my sister for reading all the comments, gathering everything together, uh, and picking and choosing the questions that she wanted to ask me. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.